Well, good morning again, and welcome, especially welcome to our Facebook family who are joining us right now. Uh, we're excited that you are here. We're excited that you're here for the last part of our series on Psalm 23. I, I hope that even though this is, should be a familiar psalm, I hope that it is something that has been blessing you. You know, as I was preparing for this, I just recognized that, you know, this is, this is something that it'd be easy for people to check out. Like just, like as we're going through the series, we're talking about a psalm that most people know that you've probably heard many times before. I'm sure you've heard it preached at funerals. I'm sure that you, you've seen the analogies to this all over. If you are anywhere near Christianity, and if you're not, we're glad you're here. We're glad that you are um, investigating what this is about. But, but this, is, this is one of those psalms that it can become so familiar that we lose the power that is actually contained in these words. It's 3,000 years old, but yet it has a relevance to what we're walking through today. As I was studying, I uh, came across a story that uh, was, was in a book, um, and I just I thought it was worth sharing. John Maxwell had shared about this actor named uh, Charles Loudon. He was a actor, a British actor. He did some stuff in the early days of Hollywood and he was just really well known, especially in England for his work. And he, Maxwell shows, shares a story of how Loudon was at a family gathering one Christmas and the people in the room decided, hey, let's go around the room and share what, it, what, Chris, what verse really to you encapsulates what Christmas is about. And so each of them got a turn. Um, Loudon was one of the first people to share. And he got up and in his regal British voice recited Psalm 23. And like he had it down from memory. You know, he had the perfect inflection. Everything was wonderful. When he got done, you know, his family was just clapping. They were so excited. And they continued around the room. And then they realized, you know, one of the great aunts was actually snoozing in the corner. Uh, so they, they woke her up. She had missed everything that had happened at this point, but they shared, this is what we're doing. And so they asked her, you know, is there something that, you know, is there a verse that stands out to you? And in a shaky voice, she recites Psalm 23. And everyone in the room is brought to tears by her recitation. And afterwards, a couple of the other family members were you know, talking with Charles and just, you know, mentioning how ironic it was that she picked the same uh, verse or the same passage and that there was a completely different response too. And he just kind of shrugged it off. He said, well, I know the psalm. She knows the shepherd. I'm hoping as we've been going through this, you've been learning the psalm, but I hope even more you become more acquainted with the shepherd. And that, that is what we've been doing through this year. For those of you who are part of our church, you already know we've been going through a fast. Many of you are probably breaking that fast today, which is always a time of excitement. But at the same time, I'm hoping you can take that excitement and put it into who the shepherd is, what he's done for us, maybe what he's taught you through this series, what he's taught you through this time of fasting and setting aside time at the beginning of the year to seek his face. And so we're going to continue to have that. And, and if this is something that's new to you or you haven't had an opportunity yet, I want to encourage you to make sure that you get to know us a little bit better so we can help you know the shepherd a little better. So this would be a great time for you to fill out your digital connect card if you haven't already. For those of you on Facebook, uh, you can text the word river to 715-953-4060. Uh, if you're here, you still have time to put this in the bucket in the back if you haven't done that already. Um, or again, you can text as well. But we're going to take some time right now and go back to this psalm. We're going to read it together like we did, we've done the last few weeks. Again, we're reading it out of the New Living Translation, so it's going to maybe look and feel a little bit different. Uh, I initially memorized this in the King James, uh, but I also kind of like some of the language that's here in, in this one. It makes it a little bit more contemporary. Uh, but uh, I want to encourage you, memorize it whatever you like, but let this be a part of your year this year. It's... 2023, let's let Psalm 23 kind of permeate the year. 
Uh, but I would invite you to stand as we honor God's word. And I'd also invite you to read along with me out loud as we, um, as we go through the psalm together. So again, we're looking at Psalm 23, and we're looking at it out of the New Living Translation. And this is how it reads, and you can read it with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, help us to know the shepherd. Help us not just to have recited these words because they're on the page or because they're words we've heard in the past, but I pray that there would be an aliveness to your word today. That, it, that it, would, it would pierce our hearts. It would pierce our souls. It would, it would allow us to see just how good you are. And that we would never take for granted the blessing of your word or the sacrifice of our great shepherd. We love you so much, Jesus. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, before you see it, why don't you wave at a person or shake a hand. Let them know you're excited to be worshiping with them today. So, the big thing that I want to bring out of this, we've been looking at different ways in which we can focus on the shepherd and we can focus on who God is and what he is to our life. And today, I really want to focus in on the last part of this psalm, but also kind of bring the whole thing together and help us to see that the Lord is our source. You know, we talked about how he's our shepherd. We've talked about how he's our shield. We've talked about how he's our strength. Today, I want to talk about how the Lord is my source. And it, it's interesting, when you look at the Old Testament, especially, God desired to reveal himself through a specific name. If you're not familiar with that, in the Old Testament, God gave Moses a name that he said, this is the name I want to be remembered as. And I want to be remembered as this for all generations. And that name is Jehovah or Yahweh. What, what's particularly interesting about that is that now most days people, especially in churches, we're lifting up the name of Jesus. But what we don't maybe see is that the name Jesus actually means Jehovah saves. But throughout the course of the Old Testament, as God revealed himself as Jehovah, he also ended up adding to that name seven different times, where he put seven different markers on that name. And the name itself simply means, I am that I am. In other words, he's saying, you need to know I am the God that exists. I'm the God of all power. I am God. But then he added a bunch of different names alongside of that to give depth and, and, and more perspective to who he was as God. And one of them is actually found in this passage. The Lord is my shepherd. In that, he revealed himself as Jehovah Rohi, which is the Lord my shepherd. But I, I want you to see a few others, and, and I want you to see that this passage actually encapsulates all seven of the Jehovah names in it, even some that weren't revealed until later in the Old Testament, after this psalm had been written. And so uh, we already talked about Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd, and that one is really easy to see because this is where we find it in this verse from this, from this text. We also have heard Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is my provider. And we see that in the phrase, I have all that I need. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is my peace. 
He leads me beside peaceful streams. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord heals. He renews my strength. Jehovah Sid Canoe, the Lord our righteousness. He guides me along right paths. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. You are close beside me. And Jehovah Mid Kadesh, the Lord sanctifies or anoints. You honor me by anointing my head. So like in this little verse, this, this little passage, 3,000 years old, a simple song. All of the attributes of God, well, maybe not all of the attributes of God, but the seven most specific ones that he wanted to reveal himself through are found in this little song. And so, as we see this and we recognize he is everything we need. He is the source of all of these things. And Jesus, our great shepherd, gives us these things and more. And so I want to focus on two more things that I believe we receive from Jesus, the great shepherd, and we can see here in this passage. Number one, Jesus gives us joy. I hope I mean, I realize what we just looked at was a very academic list. There was really weird Hebrew words that may be hard to pronounce, and maybe you don't get excited like I do about Hebrew words or everything else. But I'm hoping that maybe there's just a glimpse of something in there that you realize just how good of a God we serve, that he loves us, that he is there anointing us, that he is there providing for us, that he is there walking alongside of us, that that we have a God who is shepherding us like a good father, like a good God who's taking care of his people. And I hope that you see that a part of that Jesus has come to bring you joy. We talked about how he prepares a place for us, how, how he sets a table for us in the presence of our enemies. But then he goes on, to say this about what he does in that presence. He says, my cup overflows with blessings. To recognize that you're in the presence of your enemies and your cup is overflowing with blessings. That you have, I mean, it's, it's the idea of, of a wine cup sitting there and, and wine often in the Old Testament and sometimes in the New represents the presence of God. Sometimes it represents the Holy Spirit and it's overflowing in your life. That should make you excited. And if it doesn't, you need to take a moment and start counting your blessings. You need to look through what you've gone through this last year, what you've gone through. You made it through the pandemic. You made it through the inflation. You made it through wars and rumors of wars. You are still here. You are still kicking. There's reason to look at the blessings of God in your life. I, I didn't ask him in advance, so I apologize, Doug, but I love asking Doug how he's doing every time he comes in because he's always doing great. You know, he, 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 he never complains. I mean, I'm sure he does from time to time, but, but he just has this perspective. God woke me up today. Why wouldn't I be smiling? You have blessings in this day that you need to grab a hold of. You have blessings that overflow. And again, I want you to encourage you as you go into this year, be looking for them. Maybe write them down. Keep, keep a journal of the good things God's doing in your life. I guarantee if you start investigating this year looking for his blessings, you will find them. If you go through this year looking for disappointment and sorrow, you'll find that too. It all depends on what you want to look for. But I believe Jesus came to give us joy. So look for it this year. He also says this, which if you have no other blessing, you should be blessed by this. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. I love the language there. It's not just that he loves me. It's not just that he's good to me. His love and his goodness are pursuing me. Even in times when I'm not looking for it, even when times when I'm focused on the negative, even at times where I feel like he's distant, he's still pursuing me. He is, he is actively chasing after my heart. 
And that, that is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing to recognize we have a God who's chasing after us. That he's not content for us to stay where we're at. He loves us as we are. But he's constantly pulling us into deeper and deeper levels of his goodness, of his love. And ultimately, one day, we will live with him forever. This is one of the reasons why this gets read so much at funerals, because it's an an acknowledgement that his blessings are continuing in this person's life even after. If they've been following him, these blessings are going to continue to eternity. And, And we have that hope. You know, as, as we take Hope Night on this Friday, the real hope that we're extending is that we have a certain hope. We have a God who has freed us from sin, from slavery, and has a home waiting for us in eternity. I mean, that, that should get us excited. That should bring some joy in our lives when we realize just how good He is. And I hope you don't leave today without feeling some of that pursuing love of God on your life. I hope you don't click out of the sermon today without feeling the pursuing love of God pouring over you. And if you don't feel it now, I challenge you, take some time before we leave this morning and just ask God, help me to experience more of you. Help me to see more of your goodness, more of your love flowing into my life. But there's one other thing I think is in here and it might be easy to miss. But the one thing that, as I was studying this week, that just kind of jumped out at me was Jesus gives the Holy Spirit. I know it's not necessarily written out, in these verses, but there's concepts. Again, as we already mentioned, the cup overflowing. One of the other names of Jesus is that he would be the Messiah or the Christ. Those both mean the same thing, the anointed one. But Jesus himself said, I came to anoint them with the Holy Spirit. I came to pour out the Holy Spirit. I came to baptize people in the Holy Spirit. In verse 5, again, in the presence of our enemies, it says, you honor me by anointing my head with oil. Both wine and oil and anointing all point to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a deposit of the Holy Spirit in your life. We, we know that from Scripture. But we also see from this that he wants it overflowing. He wants to anoint your head. And and the concept here is not, we're going to anoint you with oil in just a few moments. For those of you who are open to that, who are comfortable with that, we're going to take a moment. We're going to pray for people. We're going to anoint you with oil. And part of the impetus for that comes from this verse. Other places in the New Testament tells us as believers to anoint one another with oil for healing, for deliverance, for other things. But In David's context, he would have remembered back, because David is our author here. David was an Old Testament king who was anointed as a shepherd boy. And he was not even invited to the table. But here David is recounting the many blessings of God, and he's saying, you prepared a table for me. And in that table, in the presence of my enemy, in the presence of people who didn't even think enough to invite me in, you anointed me with oil. And if he was anointed as king, he didn't just get a little dab on his forehead. That's what we're going to do. We're not, we're not going to go crazy with you guys. I have done that in the past. Um, I'll say that story for another time. But it's like, it, we, we, just, we follow it out by that. But when a king was anointed, the prophet, the priest, whoever was anointing that king came with a horn of oil. And in the presence of the people at the table, that horn was broken open and poured over the head so that the oil ran down the face and into the beard and into the clothes and onto the shoes. It was this concept of God's complete encompassing power 
on the people of God. So again, we're not doing that today. Don't get wigged out. We're, we're not going to go that direction. But I want you to see here, this wasn't just a simple thing that he was talking about. He was talking about an encompassing presence of God. And we want to believe for that symbolically today. We're going to pray for you. We're going to bless you. But we want you to walk into this year with an overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit on your life that the Holy Spirit would engulf you in every way and that you could walk in fullness and in hope because of what he's doing in your life. I don't know how many of you start your year by picking out a word. A couple years back, I, I challenged you guys to kind of do that. You know, and then one year I got called out because I didn't challenge you the next year. I'm like, well, you guys, you guys can do this on your own. I don't, I don't need to be reminding you. Maybe I should. I don't know. Maybe I'll bring it back. You know, but dictionaries do the same thing. I don't know if you realize that. Dictionaries pick a, a word for the year, but they do it backwards. They wait till everything happens in the year, and they're like, this was our, year, our word for the year. You know, and so, um, and it was interesting. I was, I was listening to a news commentary kind of talking about some of these words, and I wanted to bring some of them out to you because they're really exciting. Looking at 2022, you know, really exciting words for last year. So, uh, the Oxford English Dictionary, their word for the year was goblin mode. Doesn't that just encourage you? Yeah, you've all, you've all used goblin mode this week, right? So it's a type of behavior which is unapologetically self-indulgent, lazy, slovenly, or greedy, typically in a way that rejects social norms or expectations. Think of a guy just sitting on his couch, spoon-feeding cartons of ice cream into their mouth. That's goblin mode. So they're, they're basically saying lots of people have res resorted to goblin mode last year. Miriam Webster's, their word is gaslighting. It's the act of grossly misleading someone, especially for your own, one's own advantage. And I don't know if you've heard that enough in the news this last year, but it's been all over. Talking about how people are being gaslighted. And, and so Webster decided this is our word for the year. Collins English Dictionary, their word was permacrisis. An extended period of instability and insecurity, especially one resulting from a series of catastrophic events. And that's kind of what we've been walking through, right? Pandemics and wars and rumors of wars and inflation and recession. Oh wait, it's not a recession. You know, and, and all of this stuff. Another one that doesn't get up here is woman uh, because one of the other dictionaries had woman as their, their uh, word of the year, but they couldn't define it, so I didn't want to put it up there. So <laughs> I'm not even joking. Look, look it up on, on Google. They couldn't even really define it. So, so he, here's the thing. You look at all of this craziness. This is what the world is going through right now. These are the best words from 2022. What if we take our good word, what we're learning from Psalm 23, and be a people who extend joy, who extend the Holy Spirit, who extend God's presence into a world that absolutely needs it? If there's ever been a generation that's needed the church to stand up, be anointed, and live out the calling that God Jesus has put on us. It's this year. Let's not shrink back from this. Let's not look at the world and go, man, they're just, they're just messed up. We're just going to huddle in our church. We're going to become preppers. We're going to sit in here. We're going to surround ourselves with canned goods and wait for it all to fall apart. Let's not do that. Let's be people who are looking for ways to help people, looking for, for ways to extend the truth looking for ways to allow people to realize it's not healthy to keep feeding on what the world is feeding you. We have something better. We have hope. We have love. We have joy. We have peace in the Holy Spirit. And so my main thing that I want you to get out of this message today, and I know it's really simple, but I think we maybe need to start this year over and start with something simple. And simply this, find life in Jesus. Don't define yourself by what the world defines. You can see, they have terrible definitions. Define yourself in Christ, the good shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. 
that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Aren't we seeing that? But he says, I'm the good shepherd. I have come that you may have life and life to its fullness. As your pastor, I'm praying for that for you for 2023. That you would see the fullness of God flow over your life. That we're going to anoint you with oil, but that it would be a symbolic thing of the overflowing blessings God wants to pour on your life. So let's go into this year with this expectation. And so, a couple of quick things, and then we're going to spend some time in prayer. How you can apply what we've just learned. Take some time this week and feast. Now, I've been asking you to fast for the last three weeks. Now you get to feast. Now, what I'm not saying here is, I'm not saying go to Pizza Ranch and get as many carbs and as much fried chicken in your belly as you can. That's not what I'm saying here. If you are ending a fast right now, you're adding things back into your schedule that you've purposely taken out. As you're beginning to enjoy those things again, take time and honor God by what you're enjoying. If you've taken out food and you're, you're reintroducing that, praise God every time you get to put a new food back in that you haven't been able to consume for the last 21 days. I'm looking forward to bacon. Like, you know, and as I'm taking bacon, I'm going to be praising God. You know, I don't know if that's a good Jewish thing, but I mean, but, but I'm New Testament, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to praise him for some bacon this week sometime. I don't know when. It's coming though. You know, but, but take some time. And as you're re-adding these things, enjoy what God's doing. And even if you didn't fast, take some time. As you're going, if you go through anything this week that's enjoyable, feast on God's goodness in that. See his blessings in giving that to you. Then, if you haven't done it already, memorize Psalm 23. How cool would it be if in 2023, all of us are going around allowing this ancient song to minister to our hearts, seeing the fullness that's contained in these little words. We, you know, if I had a, pr- a word for the year, I, I don't know if I have a word, but I just have a calling, a sensing that I need to spend more time in prayer than I have in years past. You know, and you can pair the Lord's Prayer with Psalm 23. We, we taught about that, and there's still some cards if you want to see the Lord's Prayer, but there's actually a beautiful way that those two pair together. And as you're meditating on the Lord's Prayer, and as you're meditating on Psalm 23, so well, an easy way to do that is memorize it and allow it to be something that you recite to yourself as often as you think about it. Also, take some time. We've been looking at the life of Christ through this series. Let's take some time and remember the resurrection joy. The fact that when, when Jesus came out of the tomb, there was joy. That when people experienced that, there was an overwhelming, unashamed expression of just pure joy. So take some time. Read one of the gospel accounts of the resurrection. Or read all four. They're five chapters long. You don't got time to read five chapters. I got some Montana brochures. You need to carve out some extra time in your schedule. You, you need to slow down. And then lastly, let us know what you're learning. I would love to hear what God has been teaching you through this psalm as we started this year. I hope you've been getting something out of this. I hope this has been ministering to you. It's been powerful for me. And again, this is a psalm I know. This is a psalm I, I'm familiar with. It was a psalm that my grandfather would recite on demand, even in, with dementia. Like, this, this is a powerful part of my legacy. And yet, God has blessed me so much as we've revisited it this year. So let me know what you're learning. I would love to hear that. I would love to rejoice with you what God is speaking to your life. But on that level, we're going to take some time right now, and we're going to spend some more time in worship. And if you haven't been a part of these in the past, uh, we usually like to end the fast with a time of anointing. I do, I do recognize in years past, it's kind of gone a little bit long and uh, we've kind of uh, lost at least half the congregation by the time the thing's over. I do want to let you know, if you want to leave early, that is still okay. But we're going to try to go through a little bit faster this year um, just for the sake of the fact that we want everyone to be rejoicing with each other at the end. So 
What, what I'd like to do is we're actually going to set up here in just a moment. Um, Mark and I are going to come over here and we're going to be, as the pastors over here, praying for you guys. Then we have some of our, um, our leaders and teachers and elders that are going to be over here in the back. After Mark and I pray with you, we're just going to pray a quick prayer. If you want more prayer, you can find one of them in, in the back and um, allow them to pray with you. And I'm actually going to invite them in just a moment to come up. We're going to pray for them first, and then we're going to uh, release them. The other thing is the worship team and I already partook in communion together, but the communion table is back there right now. And so after you get prayed for, if you want, you can um, get communion, or if you don't want prayer, you can take communion at any time. And I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over this time. And so at any moment after we share, you can feel free to go back to the back table and partake of communion. But we're, we're just going to sing a few songs while all of this is going on. So take some time in worship, and then I, I want to I take a moment and just reflect at the end, and then we're going we're gonna to go out celebrating together. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. So why don't, why don't we stand? I'm going to pray a blessing over our worship time, over our communion. And then I'm going to ask our prayer partners to come on up here. And Mark and I are going to pray with you. And then anyone else who would like prayer, I would love, as your pastor, I would love to anoint you and, and pray God's blessing over you over this year. And then like, if you have specific prayers for healing or for family members or for you know, different situations you're going through, go and find one of our prayer partners over here and let them pray with you. And then, like I said, if, you, if you'd like to, you can also partake of communion back there as well. So um, let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are our shepherd. I pray today we would be people who don't just know this psalm, but we know the shepherd. And Jesus, I pray this would be a year where we get to know you better. I pray for any of us who've kind of allowed our faith to coast. What we recognize is we never close, coast closer to you. So I, I pray this would be a year that re-engages our faith. That we would, we would believe you for greater things in our lives, in our families, and in our church. That this could be a year marked by your presence overflowing into us. That the Holy Spirit would so saturate our lives that everywhere we go, your fragrance, your presence, your love would not just pursue us, but it would pursue the people around us. And we would have an opportunity to extend it to others. So God, as, as we pray, I pray that your spirit would fall on this place. I pray that you would bless our communion, that as we remember your body broken for us, as we remember your blood poured out, that we would walk out with joy, that we have a God who loved us so much that he was willing to die for us. So God, please bless this time. Please allow us to sense your presence. Let us not just go through motions, but let us really have a sense of you pouring out your spirit in this moment. Thank you so much for what you're doing in this church, what you have in store for our future, and what you're going to do in this moment to propel us to an amazing year. We love you, Jesus. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to be saying goodbye to our online family. We're sorry, but we, we kind of want to let this not go on uh, to the feed. So uh, we were praying for you and praying God's blessings over you as well. But we're going to go ahead and invite you in this moment. I'm going to step down, and then our prayer team will follow, and then you, can, you guys can start making a line up here um, as you feel comfortable to receive prayer. Communion is open over there. Just so you know, there's two cups in each slot, one with the bread underneath and one with uh, the juice on top of that. So just if you're looking for the bread, that's where it's at. Um, but yeah, let's, let's just go ahead and move into